tools are simple to create a captivating logo reveal, but the idea is key. While coming up with a concept might seem challenging, it's all about observation. Spend five to 10 minutes studying a logo closely and inspiration will start to flow. The trick is to analyze the logo carefully, break it down into its core elements and let that spark your creativity. Logos are often simple with minimal details, sometimes just a single icon that communicates the brand's message. As motion designers, our job is to bring that element to life and tell a story with it, no matter how simple it may seem. In this video, I'll be sharing five tricks to help you create stunning logo animations while making your workflow as smooth and efficient as possible. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Happy to share my knowledge of logo animation and your support means a lot, so don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments. All right, let's dive in. The first step to creating a great logo animation is breaking the logo down into its basic elements. This helps keep your workflow organized and prevents things from getting messy. By doing this, you'll be able to focus on animating each part of the logo individually, which makes the entire process much smoother. In our case, there are five different elements in the logo, and we need to animate each one separately to get the best results. To get the logo ready for animation, we'll need to separate each element into individual layers using Adobe Illustrator. There are several ways to do this, and I'll show you the simplest method I know. I'll include the vector file in the description link so you can download it and follow along with the tutorial. Before separating the layers, always trim the shapes first. This will make it easier to select and work with each element. Next, simply select the elements and press Ctrl plus X to cut them. Create a new layer, then press Ctrl plus V to paste them onto the new layer. Repeat this process for each element, creating a new layer for each one. When you're finished, separate each letter into individual layers so you can animate them separately. In After Effects, select all the layers and create shapes from them. This will give you more flexibility for animation. Next, just like grouping in Photoshop, pre-compose each element to handle them individually. For a smoother workflow, rename the layers and adjust their colors as you want. Once that's done, you're ready to start creating your animation. Let's hide the other layers and keep only the circle and main icon visible. Then, lock those layers to avoid any accidental clicks while working. Make sure to deselect the fill and select the stroke before you start drawing. This will ensure you're only creating outlines. Select the Pen tool by pressing G on your keyboard. Then, start creating strokes over the main icon. Make sure to create each line on separate layers to keep things organized and avoid any mess. This will help you maintain a smooth workflow and make the job much easier to complete. Here's how you do it. After finishing your first line, click on any empty area to deselect everything. This way, each stroke will be on its own layer, keeping everything neat and organized. One important tip. Make sure the strokes overlap the main icon. Adjust the stroke thickness to achieve this effect and ensure it lines up perfectly. Once the lines are created, it's finally time to start animating. Add a trim paths effect and set two keyframes for the end property, moving from zero to 100. Then press F9 to ease the keyframes and head into the graph editor. For this animation, we want a slow start, acceleration in the middle and a smooth finish. So adjust the graph editor, similar to this one. Next, copy the Trim Paths effect by pressing Ctrl plus C. Then, select all line layers, search for their contents, and paste the effect by pressing Ctrl plus V. Make sure your timeline indicator is at the beginning so that the keyframes are pasted at the start. Next, pre-compose all the line layers and select that layer as a track mat for the main icon. This will apply the animation to the main icon based on the lines. Now, let's create lines that appear before the main icon starts revealing itself. Move the timeline indicator to where the stroke begins to reveal, then create a round stroke. Position the end of the stroke where the icon starts animating. Search for the length property and adjust the start length as needed. Then, look for the cap option and select a round cap. Add a trim paths effect, setting keyframes for the end property to go from zero to 100 and the Start property from 100 to 0. Hold Alt and drag the keyframes to adjust the timing. Offset the Lines layer to delay its start, ease the keyframes, and adjust the Graph Editor for a smoother animation. Finally, create two more round strokes and apply the same steps to them.
Once you're done, pre-compose the layers and duplicate the pre-composed layer by pressing Ctrl plus D. Offset the duplicate by a few frames, then apply Fill effect. This will create a tail effect that follows along with your stroke. Now, let's take a look at how it all turned out. It looks nice and smooth. All right, let's move on to text animation. Let's start with the secondary text. We'll use the same technique as before. Draw a stroke line that overlaps the text, then add a trim paths effect. Set keyframes for the start and end properties. Ease the keyframes and adjust the graph editor for smooth animation. Once that's done, apply the track mat effect to the text layer. For the main text, we'll take a more detailed approach. Double click to open the main letters in the composition. Add an offset paths effect and adjust the amount to one before setting keyframes. Place a keyframe for the ending position, then move the timeline indicator to the beginning and adjust the amount so the letter disappears. Ease the keyframes and adjust the graph editor. Next, copy the offset paths effect and find the contents for the other letter layers. Hold Alt, select the contents, and paste the effect. Make sure the timeline indicator is at the beginning to place the keyframes correctly. Offset these layers by a few frames to create a staggered effect. Now, let's create a position animation for the main text composition layer. Set keyframes for the ending position and then the starting position, moving the layer up. Ease the keyframes and adjust the graph editor for smooth motion. Finally, let's move on to the final details to wrap up our animation. To make the last logo element appear, we'll use the same technique we used for the main text. This time, we'll skip the layer offset to keep lines more organized and less chaotic. For the final touch, we'll create a circular motion for the logo lines. Draw a circle with a stroke, adjust the thickness and color, and apply the trim paths effect with keyframes for the start and end properties. Then press R for rotation, set a keyframe for the ending position, and adjust the start position by rotating the circle. This will give you a smooth, circular motion effect. Finally, let's see how it looks. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.